recording has started. Guys, here. KW Commercial SoCal meeting. Thanks, guys, for joining. Um, super excited to have uh, Mr. Way, Asko Way, the senior economist for the California Association of Realtors, our guest speaker today. Um, we had um, Asko in a few occasions, mostly, you know, speaking to our residential guys and share just just tons tons of valuable information all you know fresh stats recent data um and we had the pleasure i think the first communicate back in um back in um, um uh, may of this year uh and then since then we had a few touches with uh with mr way and it's just you know once again just great source of information and you know thank you for making yourself available uh, as always and uh, those who, you know, of you guys, you more of a, uh, you know, the commercial side, um, um, you know, Oscar is a, the senior economist for the CAR, as I mentioned, and uh, analyzes housing market conditions, consumer behavior, uh, public uh, policy issues throughout the use of, uh, you know, all the data that they, they, they uh, and the survey that they collect from. Um, and uh, he's been doing this for how many years now, uh, Oscar? I've been with CRR for I think 17 years now, so it's wow. a long time. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it is a long time, and um, once again, it makes you uh, a, a powerful and reliable source of information. And once again, thanks for um, thanks for joining. So the floor, the virtual floor, is all yours. Uh, jump in and 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 just do your thing. We, we we're all here. Thank you, Manny, for uh, inviting me back, and hopefully that means I did a decent job the last couple of times. Now, of course, as many said, um, the last couple of times I presented uh, on residential market. So we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, commercial market today, and I'm, I have a PowerPoint as usual, and many feel free to send the PowerPoint to uh, share the PowerPoint with the audience later on. I think uh, I'm going to share my screen, if you don't mind, um, but... Uh, it's essentially going to be, give me one second, uh, here we go, are you seeing my screen? Uh, yes, we do. Are you seeing my PowerPoint? Ye yes, sir. Give me one second, let me go to the very beginning first. I don't want to spill all the, the excitement at the very end, but uh, <laughs> let's start off with... The, uh, the very first slide. You see the commercial real estate market outlook slide, right? Yes, all yours. Okay. Um, as usual, you know, because I'm an economist, I always want to go in and talk about, you know, the economic updates first. And um, not just because I'm an economist, but also because I think it's important to know the, uh, the background information. So I'm going to talk about the uh, economic outlook first give you the background and then we go into you know the national stuff before we hone in to talk about um, some of the more specific areas like office space retail space and um, and uh, a multifamily and then in the industrial so let's get started with the economic update now um, I don't know how many actually attended the, the last presentation uh, since then I think last time I presented was about a couple months ago of course Things might have changed a little bit. We have a little bit more update, a little bit more information on the economy. So let's take a look at the general economic conditions. Um, here's the uh, the GDP outlook. You know the economic activity. Let's take a look at you know how it has been in the last couple quarter. You can see in the last in the the far right hand side we have some uh, decline in economic activity at the uh, first quarter and the second quarter of this year. Obviously. First quarter is because of what happened, the uh, economic shutdown due to the coronavirus pandemic, right? But it only shut down for a couple weeks in uh, the first quarter, namely the uh, last two weeks of March. And we already dropped by about 5%. What happened is the second quarter. Second quarter actually dropped quite dramatically. You can see that it actually dropped by about 33%. This is actually sort of a preliminary number. There will be some uh, re revised number later on, but it's going to be close to that figure. A 33% is a very significant drop. It's actually higher than what we saw in the last recessions in 19 in, in 2008. And in fact, you know, the 33% is actually the biggest drop that we have had since the Great Depression in the 1930s, 1940s or so. Um, so what happened? Now, and GDP account for uh, a few components. 
uh, consumer spending is one part of it. Business spending is, is business investment is one, another part. Government spending as well as the um, import export. Now those are, are, are important components. We will kind of go over those uh, in some of the sectors later on. But retail spending is the biggest part of it. It makes up about two thirds, maybe close to 70% of all the uh, GDP. And retail sales is a big part of consumer spending. You know, retail retail sales include you know things that we spend when we go out to uh, to dinner, when we buy things you know from supermarket and things like that. So retail sales actually dipped quite a bit because of what happened and uh, to the shutdown. You know, you can see in this slide here, again, on the right-hand side here, we dropped in the very first, at the very beginning of the pandemic shutdown, uh, 8%, follow up with another 14, 15% before bouncing back um, in May, June, and July. See, the, 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 in, the, improve, the uh, increase in um, retail sales in the last three months is, you know, nice to have. Um, in May, when the, re the economy reopened, we had an increase of 18.3%. That's pretty impressive. But from uh, the next following two months, we continue to increase, but at a much slower pace, 8.4 and 1.2%. Safe to say, yes, we have some improvement in economic activity. We have some improvement in retail sales, but we did not, we have not recovered, you know, what we had before. Retail sales did go back to what happened and uh, what we had in uh, the pre-pandemic level, but some of the loss that we had in the last couple months, uh, in, in, in April and in May, might have a little bit lost. It will take some time to recover. Now, during those two or three months, what happened? You know, with retail sales being shut down, meaning a lot of um, retail sales as far as, and, and as well as restaurants and also things like leisure and hotel businesses, they all shut down. Disneyland shut down. So a lot of people actually were, uh, were laid off, and, uh, and, and in fact, it caused the unemployment rate to go up. How high? Before a uh, pandemic uh, outbreak, we had below 4% you know, unemployment rate. What happened? After that, in March, uh, the uh, unemployment started rising, and in fact, you know, in April, unemployment actually spiked up all the way to 15% as compared to below 4%. In the last few months, we have unemployment rate actually dropping, but the latest number is still show a 10.2% unemployment rate, which is still a very high number. Just to put things into perspective, 10.2% as compared to the highest that we had at last recessions. Last recessions, again, in uh, 2009, 2010, at one point, I think it was third quarter, uh, we had an unemployment rate of uh, 10%. So we're still above last year's level. I mean, last recession's level. And are we improving? The, the question is, we are impro we're, we're improving, right? So yes, we are, but how much are we improving? Let's take a look at the uh, job growth. That will give you an idea of how much we have been improving. Look at what happened again. In March, it dipped about um, you know, uh, 3 million or so. I can't remember. The, I think it's 1 million. And then at the national level in April, it dropped another 21 million or so. So we lost about 22 million of jobs. In the next three months or so, we recovered some. We recovered maybe about 9 million, 9.2 million or so. So we're still um, in a deficit. You know, we still lost maybe about 10 million. Um, and it, is, it has a lot to do with, you know, us being still shut down. The economy is still shut down. A lot of places are still um, being social distanced. And it's probably going to stay that for a while because the pandemic situation is still not contained. We had the um, we had the, um, the the state reopen in mid-May, and then after that uh, we had maybe a little bit more activities. But then in, in June we had to reshut down again because of the surge, resurgence in coronavirus pandemic, uh, coronavirus cases. So. You know, it's going to go back and forth a little bit. I think for the rest of the year, we'll probably will see continued improvement in growth, but maybe it's going to take some time to for the growth to uh, to really uh, recover back to where we where we were at. So to get an idea from different economists, we have um, a lot of different economists making predictions on where the market, where the economy is going to be in um, Q3 and Q4. Now Q1 and Q2, we already know. It dropped five percent in another thirty-three, and in Q3, uh, a lot of economists predict predict that it's going to be somewhere around twenty percent increase, uh, and in the fourth quarter, maybe a little bit slower, definitely a little bit slower, 
uh, a little bit more modest, maybe about 7% or so in the fourth quarter. And part of the concern that we also have is, remember what happened uh, in a couple weeks ago or three weeks ago, you know, the um, early part of the year, the federal government approved, or Congress approved the CARES Act, which, which uh, uh, provide a little bit more stimulus to the economy as well as to people who are unemployed. And they get another federal assistance and on top of the state uh, unemployment assistance program. But that program, the federal assistance program, actually stopped and expired at the end of July. So some people are still waiting for um, the checks being um, mentioned in the executive order that uh, President Trump mentioned that there will be an executive order that actually will use some of the FEMA money and uh, to to cover you know some of the loss. Now that check has not been distributed yet, and as of yesterday, I believe the state of California said they have already gotten approval and they will start distributing some of the checks um, that they get from the uh, executive order. But that check, remember, is going to be less than the $600 that we they had before. It's going to be 300 bucks. And so that's cut in half. And so consumer spending in, you know, the, in September or so, maybe August, may actually go down a little bit. That's why you know, the fourth quarter's number probably will not be as strong as, uh, as previous. So with that said, you know, 2020, we're still going to be down compared to previous year by maybe about uh, five or six percent. In 2021, we'll probably start bouncing back. It's going to be a four or five percent increase in the GDP, but that's still a long way to go before we cover, recover back to where we were at in the, 20, in the early part of 2020. It's going to take maybe a couple more years, 2022, 2023, we may actually see unemployment go down a little bit further. What about for Southern California? Let's take a look at Southern California um, and see how that affects you know, the economy as well as the commercial market. Let's take a look at Southern California first. I said unemployment rate is really high and I said you know a lot of things got shut down, right? So the, a lot of small businesses um, are, uh, play a big part of the economy and small businesses actually got shut down quite a bit. Uh, if you look at the statistics collected by uh, Wall Street Journal uh, by Wombly, and it looks at the uh, percent of small businesses that actually that actually uh, have, uh, have a uh, revenue down, and it's on par with the national number. About 15% uh, of them actually uh, are, are seeing you know revenue down, but many of them actually. Uh, Many of them actually have uh, experienced difficulty. Not a surprise. You know, in LA and Long Beach, the metro, LA metro area, 60%, you know, of them said they have been, uh, they are experiencing financial difficulty. Not a surprise, you know, because they, they have to shut down and that's why they can't really do anything. And so this number actually is a, a little bit smaller than what I thought. I thought it would be even higher. At a national number, at the national level, it's 54%. So what happened when people have financial difficulty? They close their stores. The pandemic outbreak closed a lot of um, small businesses. Based on what Yelp uh, suggested, about 5,000. 5,000 small businesses actually closed between March 1st and July 25th. How many of those are actually going to come back? We don't know, you know, because there are a lot of uncertainties about how long the pandemic is going to last. We don't know when we're going to have a cure, when we're going to have a vaccine. And uh, the economy could be shut down for a while. I remember, I think I, I, I heard earlier or yesterday or early this morning that, um, you know, some of the uh, businesses or some of the uh, 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 counties have already been opened by, uh, by the state of California. And LA County is one of the counties that actually may have to be monitored for a little bit longer. Uh, uh, it's going to take some time for uh, some of those matrix to actually come down first before they actually reopen. Hopefully it will open a little bit sooner. But some of the business may have already gone. And what happened when some of those small, business, small businesses got closed? When you have small businesses closed, you, you, that resulted in a lot of unemployment, right? A lot of people, people got laid off. In fact, about what, 35% here or so uh, of the um, business, uh, of the employees that work for small businesses actually had to, uh, uh, were laid off. And um, that, in, that led to, you know, um, significant negative impact on the economy. Now, based on, the, based on uh, statistics or uh, analysis done by the Southern California Association of Government, 
This is what can happen to LA County uh, and some of the other counties in Southern California. Now this uh, analysis was done a little bit earlier at the onset of the outbreak, so it may be a little bit more exaggerated, but safe to say unemployment for uh, in uh, 2020 probably will be double digit. Here it says LA County will have a 20%, close to 20% unemployment rate. That's very, very high. Right now, at the national level, I think has gone down to 10.2%, as I mentioned earlier. Um, California is usually a little higher, I think, for state. I think it is right now at around 12.2 or 13% or so. But LA County, Orange County, uh, based on earlier estimate, it will be uh, continue to be double-digit. Uh, Riverside also very high. And even 2021, even if we start recovering, it's still at a very high level, according to you know uh, SCAG. So safe to say this suggests that it's going to take some time for us to uh, recover so with that said how is that going to affect the commercial real estate market uh, many of you already know it has already impacted the commercial real estate market quite a bit and some of you may have already responded to a survey collected by NAR by National Association of Realtors on a quarterly survey that, that they put out together and ask how the market is doing how ask our ask our commercial real estate members how the market is doing let's take a quick look now based on the survey it looks like you know as far as sales are concerned the the areas that got hit um, a lot in terms of sales not a surprise office sectors and retail sectors right take a look at office and retail um, for class A and then strip center it dropped more than seven percent seven or more percent some of the other sectors also got hit really hard hotel and hospitality sectors obviously uh, those spaces also get hit hard why you know I will go into a little bit more detail later on but office to give you a very brief explanation right now office space obviously you know people are not going back to the office and uh, there are a lot of uncertainties about whether remote working will be the new norm so a lot of concern about um, the demand for office space not a surprise retail again not a surprise because we're all sh we're all shelter in place even though the market the economy reopened uh, a lot of the uh, retail sales might have already moved to online sales hotel needless to say uh, we're not going to Disneyland we haven't been visiting, you know, some of those uh, tourist area. Many people may be doing some road travel, road trip, but may not necessarily be uh, going on uh, an airplane, flying, and so hotel occupancy have gone down, and that actually could go down for go could be down for quite some time. The areas that we are seeing a little bit more uh, stability uh, is industrial. Industrial again, it could be because of online sales. Uh, the um, apartment, you know, uh, sectors uh, still down but a little bit better compared to other areas. Let's quickly go over some of the other uh, matrix. Now, with demand down, what about price? Prices also have gone down when, you know, we have a softening demand. Same area. You know, the hotel actually dropped about 7%. Retail dropped about 5 to 6%. And again, the industrial and apartment didn't really drop as much, uh, holding on a little bit more uh, because of their um, the sectors not being as dropping as much. Um, now with prices go down, <clears throat> when we take a look at cap rate, when prices go down um, and and profitability or rate of return go down, you know what's going to happen to cap rates? So right now, you know in different areas in different properties uh, set, you know the cap rates is around six and a half or five and a half to seven and a half percent. We don't have any uh, statistics. I don't have any statistics here to show how it compares to last year. But I could tell you that I think you know overall last year was somewhere between six and eight and a half percent or so. So, you know, it 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 did change the cap rate a little bit, partly because um, it's it, and now and it didn't change it that much, partly because market values actually go down for some of these um, some of these uh, property type. But you know, in the upcoming quarters, third quarter, fourth quarter or so, there might be some fluctuation because of that issue. Um, so we will have to you know, continue watching you know, how the cap rates actually behave in the next couple quarters. Second quarter may not be that telling right now. It may actually give you a, a little bit of a trend, but not as much as you would see in the upcoming quarters. And at the same time, we also want to take a look at leasing volume, how many people are actually um, renting some of these properties in terms of, again, retail sales uh, dip quite a bit, uh, and then industrial and apartment uh, also dipped a little bit, but not as much. 
the general economic conditions uh, create some uncertainties, and it's not a surprise to see all properties types actually see some uh, drop off in demand in terms of um, you know commercial property. The only type of demand, the only type of uh, increase, as many said earlier, residential seems to be doing really well because of interest rates you know being very very low. So what are some of the people thinking? And what are some of the members saying that they would think you know in the upcoming three months or so? The three month sales outlook, take a look at the individual's type of properties uh, in commercial property. Uh, it's all down except for land. Uh, industrial and apartment actually dropped only 1% as far as the uh, third quarter outlook is concerned based on the members' responses. And as far as price is concerned, pretty much everything again uh, dropped. Uh, again, with industrial being the, the areas that have the least impact in terms of price. Um, so now, um, let's go, let's take a look at the vacancy rates first before we go into individual type. So, vacancy rate also, uh, as expected, they're actually pretty, as far as office, I believe office uh, vacancy rate is typically around 15% or so at a national level. So, didn't really change as much. Uh, so, and hotel obviously dropped quite significantly because of the uncertainty about whether people will be traveling. But retail, uh, as mall, strip center, freestanding, they're all dropping. Uh, they're all seeing, you know, vacancy rate as a high level, 35, 20, 20%. So, um, that's a national number. Let's take a look at what we can, uh, when we hone into individual uh, property type and get a better understanding of what exactly is happening and what we can get, what we can expect in the uh, upcoming quarter. So let's start with office space. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about office space, retail space first, and then I'm gonna talk about industrial and multifamily. And re office space and retail space are the uh, property sets, property types that actually get hit, I think the most because of the pandemic. So let's talk about um, office space. Now, some of you may have seen this before. Now, when we talk about office space, I want to take a look at, you know, the uh, report released by Google Mobility. Uh, Google. Uh, it's called the Google Mobility Report. This is a report that Google released on a, um, I think, on a either a daily or weekly basis, and it shows you uh, whether people are visiting some of those places and how it, how's the traffic is compared to, you know, the previous at the beginning of the year. So, for example, workplaces. Compared to the, at the beginning of the year, uh, there's a lot less traffic going to, you know, uh, people going to their workplace. In fact, it dropped by about 42% um, as of uh, the latest number, August 17th. So compared to the beginning of the year, it's dropped um, not quite half, but very, very close to half, 42%. What does that imply? You know, that's implied, of course, people are working from home. The reason why I'm doing the presentation here instead of in your office is because of we have the ability to do it, you know, um, but also because we have the technology to do it. We we can actually work from home. We're actually able, capable of handling, you know, all the things that I uh, can do, you know, at work. Many mentioned earlier, and he asked me earlier about how long I have been working in my off in my home office. It's been six months already, five six months already, and it doesn't look like it's going to change because uh, technology has advanced. And it's not just from the uh, employee's perspective. There was, a, there was a survey that was done by Gardner uh, HR Consulting. And they asked employers, they asked companies, do you plan to allow your employees to work from home after um, the uh, workplaces reopen? Take a look at the results. Many of them, 82% of, the, uh, of the companies said they will let their employees work remotely at least some of the time. And even 47% said, you know, they will let their employee work all the time. So a lot of companies have already implemented those policies, remote working policies, and they may actually extend it, you know, to many of the employees uh, in the future now that they get used to uh, working from home. In fact, you know, based on some uh, statistics or based on some studies done by workplace, uh, uh, global workplace analytics, uh, it's a company that actually work on these statistics uh, all the time, and they projected that 30% of the people who work from home, 30% uh, well, of the workforce will probably be working from home multiple days a week in the next couple of years. So that's a significant, you know, uh, uh, number. That affects the demand of workplace, right? Because people work from home, from home you know, the uh, uh, office space uh, demand will probably be 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 um, lower than before. So. Short-term wise, let's take a look at what happened right now 
and then we can talk about you know what happened what will happen in the longer term short term wise let's take a look at the slide or the graph on the right hand side first what is happening right now now I only have the first quarter number here I'll have the second quarter number here but the first quarter number suggests that now, even before the uh, pandemic um, outbreak we already know that office space the uh, density of office space actually has been uh, slowing down and actually have been coming down for the last couple of years for greater LA you know the uh, the vacancy rate actually in, in, in terms of vacancy rate actually last year it actually dipped um, this year the first second quarter actually uh, uh, show an increase but it has been dipping partly because of supply. I think uh, few office spaces or uh, fewer developers have been building office spaces, and that's why you know uh, when you have uh, less supply in Greater LA, and that's why you have the vacancy rate actually dropping a little bit. But it's going to climb in the second quarter, and if you look at the forecast based on uh, released by Collier, it actually will show an increase uh, in um, in the second, in the third quarter, maybe in the fourth quarter as well. As for rental, rental rate, <clears throat> rental rate actually peaked at the end of last year and it started slowing down. Rental rate in the second quarter actually was up a little bit, maybe because there were some, still some prime office space areas um, being um, uh, demanded, but then from this point on, it's probably going to be staying flat. It's not a surprise if you look at, you know, again, this chart of market indicator that net absorptions is going to be down. It's actually down in the second quarter. It's going to be down in the foreseeable future in third quarter and fourth quarter. So, um, because of uncertainty, you know, people are uncertain about what's going on right now. You know, if you're a business owner, if you don't know exactly what's going to happen with uh, shelter in place, what's going to happen with the coronavirus situation, you hold off on capital investment, right? So, people are not investing right now. They're definitely not buying because of that reason. And so, they hold back. And that's when they actually you see the demand goes goes down, um, and that's going to continue for a little bit longer. And if you let, look at individual county, take a look at you know L.A., Orange, and then Empire, um, you're seeing right now in the fourth quarter the uh, there's a, a little bit of a a, a, a flat uh, the vacancy rate actually stay flat compared to the you know, same uh, same quarter of last year for L.A. It actually dipped a little bit in Orange County and in Empire. In the second quarter, in, um, in the second quarter, and the reason could be similar to what I mentioned earlier, um, that you might be actually seeing, you know, less supply in the second quarter, um, and the coronavirus pandemic situation may not have affected office space as much, and it will probably show up, you know, in the third and the fourth quarter, and you start seeing a vacancy rate started climbing. Um, as far as the lease rates are concerned, they're dipping in most most area. But, you know, except for Inland Empire. Now, here are a couple of things to look uh, to kind of uh, speculate a little bit. Now, I mentioned about, you know, remote working uh, as affecting the, uh, uh, the office space market. Um, is it going to have a long-term impact? Uh, most likely, it will have a long-term impact. But is it going to be as big as, you know, uh, everyone says? There are some concerns that um, uh, about remote working also. Some of the companies... The, the results are not uh, shown uh, in some of the slides that I have here, but some of the companies uh, being interviewed, they just show concern about you know people working remotely because remote working, yes, it makes it easier. Uh, people don't have to commute, but at the same time, there are a few things that really need to have people in the office. For example, um, for new employees, you know when you have a new hire, it's really hard to train a new employees with just an hour or two hours of Zoom calls, right? You have to actually have it shadow you and actually, uh, you know, uh, sit with that person. So that needs to be done, you know, when you're in the office environment. What about um, concern about cybersecurity? You know, we're all working at home and some of you may or may not, I have, uh, uh, have concerns about uh, Zoom bomb. I've been Zoom bomb before. So there are cybersecurity issues that actually people need to be concerned about. And also, you know, another issue is a lot of time when you're in the office, you know, that's where, you know, you, you put your, put a few people in the same office, same conference room, and that's how you innovate. That's how you com uh, communicate with ideas and come up with good ideas. So, despite the fact that, yes, I think remote working is probably going to be the trend uh, in, in the future, it may not be as big as uh, uh, all we, uh, it may be, it, it will be big, but probably not as big as what we thought it will be. Let's take a look at, you know, the developers, the supply side. On the supply side, what do uh, developers think? 
For Allen and Orange County, take a look at this sentiment uh, survey done by uh, Alan Mackins and UCLA Anderson. They actually release uh, uh, a sentiment about uh, rent and vacancy. Rent and vacancy, if it is, uh, just to make it very clear, if it is below that 50 um, line, 50% 50 line, it means they're not optimistic. Now keep in mind also, this is a, a speculative uh, sentiment that shows the developers, they're not gonna have their projects done until three years later. So this is their speculation of what their sentiment is three years from now. So for developers, they're not very optimistic because uh, uh, about the rent and vacancy for now for office space. So it, they're below 50% uh, right now. Now, also keep in mind, usually the sentiment index is affected by the general market, uh, general economic conditions. So it is possible that it might actually go up. But based, uh, as of now, for LA and Orange County, the sentiment actually have gone down to below 50 for rental rates and vacancy rates. That also suggests that the overall uh, sentimental uh, sentiment index is actually below. For for LA, Orange County, it was about 50%. It was about 50 for the last quarter, but it dipped to you know the um, or last time, and but it dipped below 50 for now. Last time we had a great recession, the same thing happened. The developer developer sentiment actually dropped below 50. So. As far as the supply side, it may, they may actually not build as many uh, uh, office space for now. So vacancy rate, who knows? You know, we may see some fluctuation in the, the longer term, but in the short term, probably the vacancy rate will probably go up. What about retail? We talked about office space, but what about retail? I showed you this chart earlier. The Google Mobility Report not only report the workplace, but also report where people are going in terms of retail and recreation. Retail uh, space, uh, retail um, uh, areas, people are traveling less or going less to retail sales uh, outlet. 30% drop, close to 30% drop in LA, LA County. So that, that means fewer people are shopping uh, in person and going to retail outlets or to malls, right? So what happened? What exactly happened to uh, retail outlets? Let's take a quick look at the um, statistics collected by opentables.com. Opentables.com, some of you know, is a, uh, a website that collect information on uh, reservations. They put reservations for restaurants. When people go on Opentables.com, they can make reservations, and then Opentable will actually send the reservation to the restaurant. The traffic has gone down significantly. You know, when people are not making reservations uh, since the outbreak. It dropped 100% as the market, sh uh, as the uh, economy shut down. And for until what, uh, when the economy reopened around uh, mid-May or so, and then it started rising a little bit. Now, this is city of LA. This is not LA County. This is city of LA. So the the traffic actually started rising a little bit. It, in fact, it went all the way back up by about 25%. So restaurants start uh, uh, showing some uh, optimis optimism for a little bit. And then, of course, we had the re-shutdown. So as of now, uh, about two weeks ago or a week ago, uh, the uh, reservation, the number of reservations still down by about 80% people, because people are not, well, first people are not working in downtown, if it's city of LA, people are not working in downtown and people are not going to restaurants because of the shelter in place order. So in the long run, it's going to take some time for the uh, retail sales to come back up. And because of that reason, because of this uncertainty, there have been studies that shows what's going to happen, you know, with retail sales. Take a look at my bullet points here. Uh, a report done by Retail Next uh, suggests that they uh, interviewed 450 brick and mortar uh, retail executives, and they said a lot of uh, the, the the stores have been closed. Now, whether it's be temporary or for uh, a little bit longer term, that's really hard to say. But if you look at the uh, the report done by UBS, it suggests that in the future. Uh, in the next five years or so, there might be actually some shutdown in retail space. In fact, uh, it will be 100,000, take a look at the numbers here, 100,000 retail stores actually will be closed nationwide. That is a, a, a longer term trend, not a, a short term trend. So, And this is something that we probably already know. Now, I was not here to do any uh, commercial real estate um, uh, outlook before, but I've shown before, even a couple years ago, that retail space has been actually um, uh, have less demand because of the increase in online sales, right? 
uh, and we will show you some online sales in a minute. And so this is an existing trend that has been ongoing. So it's not new, but because of COVID-19, things actually gotten worse a lot faster. Um, if you look at, again, the slide on the right-hand side, you see the, the vacancy rate spiked up from 5% to almost 6% uh, in the last quarter or so. Uh, uh, rental rate actually stayed pretty much flat. And if you look at, you know, the market indicator for the last, for Greater LA, vacancy rate, not a surprise, uh, went up in second quarter and will continue to go up in the uh, upcoming quarters or so. Again, not a surprise, net absorption down, uh, less demand in the retail space for the next couple quarters or so. And um, rental rate, actually right now it's uh, increased, partly because again, I think some of the prime retail space may continue to, uh, to, to see some movement, but then it's going to continue to decline uh, in the next couple quarters or so. Um, so yes, the, the retail space is a little tough you know, right now and maybe a little tough, you know, in the next couple quarters or so. There are some silver lining though. There are some, I shouldn't say silver lining. There are some uh, positive that you can take a look at. Now, how much positive it adds to the outlook, um, it's really hard to say. We have to see, you know, how that uh, works out, pan out. But a couple of things to, to mention, you know, because, you know, the, the general environment is that if we continue to practice social distancing and we need a, a little bit more space uh, because of the COVID-19 situation, town centers, which uh, offered a little bit more out, uh, outdoor and offer a little bit more walkability, would probably be a little bit more popular compared to some of the indoor uh, retail sales outlet, retail space. Uh, the other part of it also is uh, something to, to, note, uh, to be noteworthy is, I'm going to show you that online sales actually spiked up a little bit. Some of these e-commerce, some of these online space are probably going to need a little bit of um, retail um, space to use as a uh, their display center. Some of these, uh, like Amazon and some of the other, these other e-commerce, are already using some retail space to show their new products. So you're going to see uh, more of these uh, e-commerce using these out, uh, retail space to actually use as um, a, a location to demonstrate their products. Now let's uh, go down to the individual county retail space and uh, for LA County, Orange, Inland, pretty much you can see, you know, retail, the vacancy actually went up. Not a surprise in the second quarter, it will continue to go up in the third quarter, maybe in the fourth quarter. Net absorption, not a surprise, uh, a decline. This one should be a negative here, negative 2.2 um, here. And then as far as, 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 far as the asking uh, lease rate is concerned, um, for LA and Inland Empire actually went up again. I think uh, we're only showing the um, some of the retail space that actually um, are still in place because they are prime locations. Um, and Orange County actually dropped a little bit. And as far as the developers are concerned, the suppliers are they optimistic? Definitely not. You know they have been declining for quite some time. Again, it's below 50. It's not very optimistic. They have been declining for the last. Um, for LA, actually LA Orange, actually they have been below 50 for quite some time going back to 2016. So um, we saw a little spike in Orange County and at the end of last year, but then it starts slowing. Is it going to improve in um, 2022 or 2023? That's really hard to say for Orange County. It's really hard to say, but uh, it looks doesn't look like retail space outlet is as um, is gonna is taking a big hit uh, as compared to some of the other space. Now. Let's look at it from a, let's give you a little bit more positive news uh, from the industry, industrial space as well as the multifamily. For the industrial space, um, it's a little bit more positive. I said earlier, people are not shopping uh, offline, people are not sh uh, shopping in person. I mean, of course, that's not exactly true. There are, some pe there are people who still shop uh, offline. Um, and online, but online retail sales really uh, surged. We have been seeing online sales activity, you know, continuous, uh, continue to climb, and it's pretty steady from 2000 all the way to 2019. But what happened in the last couple months, or last few couple quarters, I should say? It was the online sales usually make up about 12, 13%, or maybe actually yeah, about 12% or so. At the end of the first quarter, or near the first, uh, near the end of near the end of last year, it was still about 12%. 
In the last couple months or the last couple quarters, it spiked up to uh, close to 16, 17%. It increased by about 6% in just a matter of two quarters. That's absolutely, you know, not following the trend. Um, but they have no choice. Online uh, retail uh, consumers have no choice. They accelerated because first they have the technology to do so, and and the second, there's no way for them to actually go out and shop. They so people are shopping online, and once you actually start shopping online, some people, you know, a lot of people don't want to go back. But the other part of it is online grocery delivery and pickup. Online uh, grocery and delivery uh, definitely has improved significantly. Uh, people again, they're not able to shop, you know, at the supermarket. They're not able to shop somewhere else. So, so they have to actually order uh, grocery online. So take a look at what happened in the last year or so. Last August, the sales for online grocery was 1.2 million. Take a look at what happened in June 2020, just 10 months from from last year. It increased by six times. It's 7.2 billion as compared to 1.2. That's because people are spending a little bit more on online grocery, and that's because you know the number of orders also uh, uh, really surged significantly. So online grocery is another um, uh, trend that we are seeing that we have that has been expedited. Online grocery delivery uh, will actually help you know uh, uh, will lead to increase in industrial space because online grocery means a lot of storage, a lot of cold uh, refrigerating storage is needed if the uh, business actually start rising, and so they need industrial space. They also need distribution center. So with um, the a, a lot of people not shopping uh, in person, they actually need to go to uh, online grocery, and that actually increase you know the industrial space uh, need for those uh, area. A um, couple other re now before we get into the specifics here. Uh, on on the L Greater LA, let me throw you a couple other things as well. Uh, yes, it looks like yes, uh, uh, online activity has gone up, and then online grocery has gone up. But keep in mind, keep in mind, uh, the economy is not is still down. It's still down, you know, quite a bit, you know, at, with 10% uh, unemployment. So the general economic conditions is actually not still not as good as. Uh, a few months ago, or maybe even last year, so that will actually depress, you know, industrial space. The other part of it is also um, remember this pandemic, uh, the uh, coronavirus, is not just limited to LA or limited to US. This is a global pandemic. You 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 already know that means every single country or most of the countries are affected. What what happens when mo many of the countries are affected? That means international trade probably go down. And import export goes down. What happened with import export goes down? Uh, import export going down means there is less an, uh, uh, need for industrial space for storage for international products. So, because of those reasons, you're still seeing you know some uh, uh, pessimism you know in industrial space in the short term. In the long run, though, I think it will be a little bit better. Now, let's take a look at the short term first. If in terms of vacancy, absolutely, you know, vacancy shot up. You know, in the last quarter or so, from uh, between 2.2 percent or so uh, to 3 percent, so vacancy definitely has gone up. Rents actually kind of level off a little bit. Uh, what about in the future? If you look at vacancy rate right now, it's gone up. Uh, it's expected to go up in the next couple quarters or so because of the concern of what's going on with the economy. General economy, as I mentioned, may not fully recovered until maybe 2022 or so. Net absorptions uh, are not surprised to go down, but rental rate actually stayed flat. So in the short term, we're probably still seeing a little bit of uh, you know drop in demand, but in the long run, uh, if your if your client is looking for something a little bit longer term, then it might be a little bit more um, optimistic. And um, for individual cities or individual county, vacancy rate. Uh, not a surprise increase in LA, but actually a decline in LA and uh, Orange County and and Inland Empire. Now this could be also because of um, the uh, on the supply side it's saturated a little bit, so we may not have built be, we may not have been building uh, as many industrial space in the last couple quarters or so. It's going to pick back up though. You will see it in the um, the uh, next couple slides or so with the uh, sentiment in terms of asking rent. Asking rent actually for all three counties, it actually has gone up. Again, it could be because of location. Um, 
So let's take a look at the sentiment uh, really quick before we get into multifamily. Development, developers sentiment, just like all the other uh, um, uh, property types, uh, commercial property types, they drop. But you can you notice that it actually didn't drop as much. In fact, you know, for LA, Orange County, they have been below, they have been above 50 basis point or 50 the 50 percent line uh, until the current quarter. So the general economic environment is again the reason why it's driving down. You know, the um, the sentiment. Um, if you take a look at Southern California, the ratio of demand versus supply. So if it if it's about 50%, that means demand is higher than supply. You can see the latest quarter or latest uh, survey, the the ratio is still above 50. That means demand is still higher than supply. It's, that means you know as far as the market being um, oversupplied, it's not exactly the case. The last quarter or so though. We are seeing, you know, less supply for now. It may actually pick back up, you know, after maybe this year or so when people start getting a little bit more certainty. So the last segment. I'll go. I'll cover the last segment before I give you, you know, the concluding remarks. I know I've been speaking uh, uh, very fast, so you may not have captured everything. So, but the last few slides will give you a little bit more bullet points. So the last segment: multifamily. How's the apartment uh, doing? Well, multifamily is um, for renters. You know, a lot of renters, you know, uh, uh, live in an apartment, right? So what happened when the economy uh, really go down and the sectors that were going down are in the retail sectors, service sectors, and in the leisure and hospitality sectors. This is a sector, these are sectors that actually employed a lot of uh, younger and low wage workers. And many of those are actually renters. And that affects, you know, uh, their ability to pay rent. If you take a look at the survey done by apartmentlistsurvey.com, uh, apartmentlist.com, you see about 33% of the renters, well, 33% uh, uh, of Americans, I should say, um, actually were, del were uh, uh, behind on their payment in the first week of August. Now, they eventually started paying, and 90% actually caught up, catch up uh, on you know, paying by the end of the month, but many people are actually behind on their payment. Now this situation probably will get worse because uh, in, in either August or September, because uh, remember what I said earlier, the end of July is when we actually started seeing when the uh, federal assistance program on unemployment actually expired. So a lot of people may actually not be able to pay rent you know, in August or maybe in September. So that number could go down, but as of now, 33, about one third of the people were actually are behind, at least in the first week. And those people who are behind, about 32% actually start accumulating, you know, uh, debt over the last few months. Not a whole lot. Some renters, let's focus on renters. 15% of the renters of those who accumulated debt uh, owe their landlords about $1,000 or so. But, you know, for the other 15 or 16% owe more than $1,000, some even 5000 So. As this doesn't affect just renters, obviously, it affects you know landlords, affects real estate investors, right? And what happened? You know, in the last few months, because people cannot pay their rent and they're behind the rents, some of the renters decide, okay, yeah, we definitely need to negotiate with landlords. So what happened? Twenty-eight percent of them who are behind uh, who are behind on debt negotiated with their uh, landlord to come up with something, a new plan or something. Another twenty-one percent actually started negotiating. But another 18% actually got denied. So this affects you know, the bottom line of landlords. The other issues that uh, I'm not very familiar with, I'm not a lawyer, but I know there are uh, there are issues with evictions. You know, uh, the eviction policies at the city level and at the local level affect you know the desire of uh, owning a property because there are uncertainty about what's going to happen with evictions, whether it will be extended towards the end of the year. That again, hurts the bottom line of many landlords and property owners, and that actually could uh, limit the, uh, the, the, lower the desire for owning a property. And if you take a look at multifamily, um, occupancy rate definitely have gone down for each and every single individual county. Uh, it had gone down from 96 in LA to 96.6 to 95.4. Same for Orange County and uh, Inland Empire. The uh, one thing to notice though, the drop in occupancy rate in Inland Empire actually didn't go down that much. And this might actually have something to do with the fact that, of course, if you look at the effective rent, it's not as expensive as in LA and it's not as expensive as in Orange Counties. People may be able to pay a little bit more on time. 
And in fact, that shows here. People who live in Inland Empire actually have a 94% uh, on-time uh, rate of paying their rent as compared to 90 and 92.6%. So in fact, you know, Inland Empire actually is a, a county that actually has uh, the highest uh, on-time uh, rate of uh, paying rent. And the other thing to, 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 be, uh, to note is I kept on mentioning earlier about uh, remote working, right? If for people who are working remotely, they have a little bit more flexibility now. They don't necessarily have to live in, for someone who live in L, uh, work in LA County, they don't necessarily have to actually live in, uh, uh, 15 minutes away from LA uh, from their workplace. They actually can move a little bit further. They may, be, they may opt for a little bit bigger house. They may opt for a little bit bigger uh, uh, place in a more affordable county. Riverside, Santa Bernardino may be a county that they may move to. So you may see a little bit more demand because of that reason, but of course there are other reasons why people actually live in a particular county, not just because it's more affordable. Uh, but that's something to take a look at. Again, the uh, optimistic sentiment of multifamily. Um, UCLA suggests there is a decline. Again, it's decline uh, in LA, Orange, and San Diego, but you can see that the decline really just happened in the last quarter. So that means it, it may be because of the economic environment as well. It may come back or not. So next few slides, I only have four more slides left. I know I'm way over time, but um, four more slides left. Office space, let's give you some concluding remark. There are a lot of uncertainties uh, for businesses. They are not able to um, assess whether they want to expand or not because of the uncertainty with the coronavirus, and that's why they're holding back. So demand is actually you know, being held back, but also um, the remote working policies. A lot of businesses were able to implement a successful uh, work, a remote working policy that actually would uh, cloud the long-term perspective, long-term speculation of what is going to happen with office space. But, and there are risks that I mentioned earlier, uh, less innovations, higher cybersecurity, that may actually prevent people from working from home. Um, on the other hand, the uh, question about where is going to be the next office. Now, now that you don't have to actually, uh, you don't necessarily want to build in a dense area, you may actually see offices pop up in more suburban area. Retail space, here are some of the bullet points. Retail space has been struggling. We know that for a long, long time, it's continued to struggle because of COVID-19 It actually expedited the process. Some of the retail space, they thought they switched it. They actually thought, okay, well, we can actually do uh, experience, uh, a retail sales that sells experience at dining and entertainment. And because of COVID-19, actually, that is not no longer the plan for some of the uh, spaces because of the social distancing measure. But I also mentioned about a couple of things uh, about the, the positive. Town centers could benefit from COVID-19 and also faster growth in e-commerce that will allow um, some of those uh, actual physical location to be used as showroom for customers to test new products. Industrial space, mostly positive, but more on the long term, not in the short term. The short term, still economic downturn and also the um, less people importing and exporting will lead to less demand in office and industrial space. But in the longer term, there is positive spillover because we are seeing some more online shopping, but also the grocery delivery and pickup services also started rolling. So you may actually need, see a little bit more need on the industrial space because they need cold storage facilities and warehouse and distribution centers. Lastly, multifamily homes, this is the last, the very last slide. Um, multifamily uh, uh, renters are hit, you know, because of unemployment, and uh, many uh, uh, many of those renters they're not paying on time, and that affects you know landlords. Landlords have to assess, uh, and re rental invest uh, rental property investors have to assess, you know, whether they want to take the risk or not, and some of them may not, and that's why it affected the demand of um, of uh, rental property or multifamily housing right now. Um, the eviction moratorium is still uh, very clouded. We don't know when it's going to be extended or lifted, and it's, it varies between cities. So that's a little um, cloudy right there. But also the other aspect that actually may lead to uh, concerns about uh, renters or what, how many renters will be renting is low mortgage rates. Low mortgage rates definitely have, uh, benefit of residential properties, but at the same time, some renters 
who may be paying high rent may think, well, maybe I should just go for uh, buy a house instead of renting. So that affects you know the demand for uh, rental properties as well. Um, with that said, I think I covered most of the uh, property uh, types that you guys are looking for. On Facebook Live. Oh, no, that's, let me just tap this one. The broadcast okay. of Facebook Live has stopped. That's uh, not us. Sorry, go for it. Yeah. Um, Oscar, thank you. The, the, uh, first of all, it was, I know, like on a, on a speed, um, and uh, that was a, tons of information. We, we, there, there's, a, there's a meeting right up to us, but they, 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 they're going to wait for a second. Um, let, let's, and guys, I, I have the uh, follow-up email ready to go. Um, with um, with um, uh, the slide that Oscar uh, generously shared with us, we're going to have all of that. You can go with that, you know, uh, as well. Um, uh, mute yourself or unmute yourself, sorry, if you want to ask a couple of questions. Uh, as long as we have Oscar on the on the call, uh, once again, it was tons of information and and thanks for starting with the you know the the dark clouds of what have <laughs> you of reality, but then you know end up with hey. Look at the, 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 those, those various opportunities and on the good stats as well, which is very, very encouraging. So thank you for that. You're very welcome. Just a quick note before, you know, if anyone has any questions, um, the slides that uh, I, I sent to you, many uh, in the notes section, it does have some notes as well. So, you know, feel free to take a look at those notes uh, from the uh, slides and you'll get a little bit more from it as well.